The daily grind of life can seem trivial at times. The same routine every week with few exceptions. But out here in the wilderness, there's simple purpose meeting the most basic needs. Food, water, travel, sleep. You would think that such a simple existence makes for the most trivial routine of all. But I find no greater sense of belonging and purpose in all my life than in this simple existence on the water. Hey! Get out of here! Okay, here we go. I've got 200 kilometers ahead of me, solo, down this seldom traveled river. Got a pretty iffy forecast. I think it's gonna be a challenging route, but I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to the challenge. First fish of the trip. What do we got? Barbless hooks fall right out. This poor guy has some kind of disease. Look at that pink spot. Just a small pike. Let him go right away. Thanks, dude. There he goes. There's either a wolf or a lynx in there. I've just got the back end of it. Oh, it moves so silently. Just saw the end of it. I'm guessing it was a lynx. I just saw the butt of it walking back into the woods. I think just beneath that dying cedar, I think it was watching me. And by the time I saw something moving, uh, I could only see the rear end of it. But based on the size, I'm thinking lengths. Oh man, that's awesome. I wish I'd, I'd seen more though. They move like a ghost. Didn't snap one branch. It's gone. I, there's no sign of it, but I didn't hear a thing as it went away. I had to hop out and see if I could find any sign of it. It looks like there's some smushed moss, but I don't know. Can't get anything out of that. But it was just here.
had high hopes for the wildlife on this trip and it's living up to expectations so far. That's a beaver, a family of otters. I've never got that close to a flock of mergansers before. A arse of a lynx, tons of waterfowl, just a, a, a lot of wetland here and that's usually money. Just need a bear and a moose now. Bull moose is a definite hope for this trip. Oh yeah, uh, three eagles actually, I don't know if I mentioned that. So I'm through McKay Lake now, which was about 22 kilometers, which is pretty much exactly what I need to accomplish every day in order to make it back on time. But this is by far my most favorable day for conditions, so I'm gonna push it. The sun still has like a good two hours left in it, so I'm gonna keep going down the Pick River now. Just finished the first short portage of the trip. Let's see if I can get a dinner fish here. Yep, fish on for fast. <laughs> what is it? Fighting like a brookie, but brookies are out of season right now. No, it's just a very small pike. There it goes. The way it was rolling seemed uh, trout like. This last gasp of summer here, it's maybe, uh, maybe hit 20 degrees Celsius today. Brought back quite a few black flies here. It's the second, uh, the second wave of black flies. So I'm gonna get in the canoe and, and do some fishing. Keep moving, they're not so bad on the water. Getting some follows to the boat, but all small pike. So that, the black flies and the fading light are telling me to keep, keep going. Still gonna find somewhere to set up camp tonight. Terrible access here. Super muddy, shallow. So I'm just going out into the middle to get water for the night. It's the only safe place to have a fire here. There's nothing in the woods, no rocks, no stones or anything to make a base. I'm using the mud. I've got potato and bacon chowder on. I, uh, I'll add the bacon after. It was easier to dehydrate without it. Right beside my fire is some moose tracks. It's a nice evening. It's supposed to storm overnight, so gotta make a good camp here tonight. While that rehydrates, I'm just looking for a good spot to set up the hammock. Really nice open area here. That's what prompted me to stop. And with the big rainstorm and potentially thunderstorm coming overnight, I'd like to be tucked in a little bit. So the potato chowder has rehydrated. Throw my bacon in there. This is real bacon. And some green onions. Oh. Turned into one of those days where I just didn't stop for lunch. I just wanted to make good progress while I had good conditions. So this is gonna be really good. Oh, and I squished down six rolls to go with it. <laughs> I'm gonna have this at least one more time though. I planned on eating it for three meals, but I basically had to use half of it to have a, a good amount for tonight. So I guess I'm down to two, so I better catch some fish. It is 8.55, it feels like it's midnight. It's uh, so dark at this time of year, much darker than summer anyway. Today was like a vacation compared to what I think the rest of the trip is gonna be like too, so. I'll show you what I mean. I'll take a screenshot of the weather before my trips. So typically on my trips in this area, I don't get cell phone signal. So I take a screenshot of the weather so uh, I can see what's coming. 
So today, Saturday, was the nicest day, 18 degrees, and actually ended up being sunny. Uh, but the next four days, considerable rain, and then the four days after that, uh, quite chilly, getting into the negatives overnight. And then you got precipitation and wind information below, which is very useful, but yeah, I think it's going to be tough. Tuna wraps for breakfast. So here's what I'm working with for navigation. I've got this very small scale map from the town of Manitouaj with a write up on rapids and uh, the route. However, these guides are out of date and, um, and lack a lot of detail, but they're good as a, an overview. There was this write up from R. McKenzie on my CCR, which I've also used for information. Big Digong First Nation did this route and cleared it in 2016. Um, Chief Mishano led that, so I have their video. They made a beautiful video of the trip, which I'll link to. Uh, it's fantastic. I highly suggest you check it out. It'll be a lot better than my video. Um, and then I made my own series of maps based on whatever information I could glean from these, the video, and uh, from satellite imagery. And then I also keep, uh, that's the section map version, but I have an overview map as well which shows my position. You can see I'm at the top. I have a long way to go. <laughs> they give a quick description of what to expect as well. This route is for canoeists looking for an adventure. This trip will take you past many of the area's challenging rapids and magnificent waterfalls as you follow the route traveled by First Nations and voyageurs long ago. This is the longest canoe route in the region, offering a variety of scenery waiting to be photographed. And then uh, fishing says pike, pickerel, rainbow trout, and sturgeon. Sturgeon is a closed species though, but they're here in the Pick River. Um, and then wildlife, many species of wildlife such as moose, bear, wolves, ruffed grouse, beaver, loons, and other waterfowl can be seen along the routes. Not to mention lynx and their arses. And then I keep my maps in this waterproof map case. This is by Seal Line. And I'm just waiting out the rain for a little bit um, because it was supposed to stop soon, so I'd rather not get soaked for the whole day um, if it means just waiting a little bit. I'm not gonna have any opportunities to dry out the rest of the trip. There's gonna be no sunshine adequate for that. And uh, drying your, your clothes on a rack by the fire is, it usually puts some ember holes in them, so I'd rather not. The beauty of canoe tripping isn't the glory of a big fish, or your heart pounding yards away from a moose, nor is it the joy of sunshine or the peace of quiet. The beauty is as simple as getting to find out what's around the next corner. The rest happens or does not happen. The fish may not bite and the animals may not come. But rain or shine, at the end of a canoe trip you always get the pleasure of rounding that corner and the thrill of exploration. Spent about an hour under the tarp and then the rain started to let up. So I started packing up and then the sun just broke through and now it's like blue skies mostly. <laughs> I love watching my own wake as I come around the corner. This canoe has a fair bit of weight. I mean, it's 75 pounds, the canoe itself, fiberglass. I'm 200 pounds and my gear all in is probably 125 pounds. So it's 400 pounds moving through the water here. I'm like a manatee. The trouble with paddling a river from its headwaters is that usually Upstream you get log jams and I'm at the first one of uh, probably several Get this side up and over and then I'll lift the other heavy end up
Neil Prim socks feel good. Your feet are warm. Just had a big beaver swim under my canoe. And it's always so startling when it happens. I mean, that's only happened to me two or three times in my life where it's gone right under. It looks like the biggest fish you've ever seen at first and then, and then you clue in, but they're quite rotund under there. Their big tails, especially. It's snowing tamarack needles. They're covering the, uh, the top of the water. The tamarack's behind me there, turning yellow. They're a coniferous tree, but they lose their needles each fall and they turn brilliant yellow beforehand. And yeah, their, their needles are just raining down. It's lovely. Stopping for lunch here. Moose tracks all along the banks, everywhere. Be shocked if I don't see one on this trip. Coming up to a bony little mini rapid here. Probably should have scouted this first. It's all good. It looked so easy and then as I was approaching it, I was like, ah, quite a few rocks in there, but it was all good. Crazy, nothing in the river. There's no sign of life whatsoever. I haven't had a bite. I've been fishing log jams and deeper pools around some of the curves. I haven't had a bite. The river is also extremely shallow right now though, so that's probably why. Massive thunderheads up there. So the the forecast calling for the thunderstorms was not off. I really can't believe this, but uh, I lost my net. I've been going through some brush and like under log jams and stuff. And at some point it must have ripped it off my pack. I had it right here. I just replaced the net and the truly ironic thing is that I overreacted when Aaron lost it last time. I was, already, I was just having a bad day really. And now I've gone and done it. Talk about humble pie. Wow, I feel like an idiot, but yeah, that's, that's karma. I don't think I can justify going back. Oh man. Oh man, what an idiot. What an idiot. I 
can't believe that. Oh. It could be kilometers back. There's just, I have no idea the last time I had it because I haven't got a fish today. I haven't needed it. Gonna cut the sticks off this down flush and then I can pull the canoe over it. Oh. Log jams. For a while I wanted the right tool for scraping the bottom of the canoe. Most, like a bale bucket, just doesn't scrape. And this is just a lotion bottle cut off at a bit of an angle. And you can really scrape it like a spatula. I'm not sure if low water is helping or hindering on these log jams. I like these ones because it's so low, I'm able to slide under. I just have to clear some branches, so I'll take it. I think this one's number seven. Number eight, cut a hole through there. Here's number nine, grinding my progress to a halt. This one's gonna be trickier to get under too, or around anyway. The mud here is terrible too, like boot sucking mud, but I find the best way is to lift an inch, let down, lift an inch, and just keep shimmying out. If you try to just yank out and just you stop, don't stop pulling, it just doesn't give, just suctions. It's this type of mud, like milkshake thick. Oh, yes. These log jams, they can take like 10, 20 minutes easily for just simple log jams like these. These aren't even the big colossal log jams that force you to portage. It's a real tangle in here. Made a pretty decent trail through here. Now it's time for the gear. Getting sprinkles on and off and there's thunder in the distance. It's six o'clock now, so I'd like to stop soon.
there aren't many better feelings than when you are getting drenched and it's uh, storming. The rain is just let up, but when you get a tarp up, it's just such a feeling of comfort. Just a dry little space. 20 square feet or whatever it is, it's called my own little room. And I'm safe and I'm dry. And it's just such a good feeling. So I actually brought a gas can on this trip. I, I can't remember the last time I did that. Just knowing how cold and wet it looked like it was gonna be. I decided it was worth it. I don't like them. There's abundant fuel in the boreal forest. I'm not saying I wouldn't use them anywhere, but around here there's just so much fuel and tinder. So it's not my preference, but uh, I really am happy I did this. Just uh, the next four days are probably gonna be gross and then quite cold after that. So this will be really nice. It'll be a nice comfort cooking curry. Oh, don't you love how it stains containers that it's in? It's just that flavorful. And rice, and I can't wait. Oh yeah, got some white wine as well, also scotch. Feels good, feeling really good here. It smells good. I love curry so much. Beautiful spot here. This is my kind of site at campsite actually. Just a little space hacked out in the bush beside the water. Nice moss and spruce forest behind me. Love it. Cats and dogs now. Couldn't be happier that I'm under the tarp. Chili and garlic bread on the menu this morning. Getting a good early start. I need to put in a big day. I think I only made 19 kilometers yesterday because of 10 log jams, so today I gotta regain some ground. The boots are still full of mud. <laughs> clean them out a little. It's making the boots smaller because it's so full of mud. <laughs> Starting today with a log jam, number 11. Just a small one. I actually stopped here yesterday because I didn't want to start another one, which was a great decision in the end, given how it started to pour. But I shoved the logs around a little and they held and left a little passage for me. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Beautiful fall colors again this morning, just making the whole paddle wonderful and beautiful. And the dogwood and alder along the shores, along with the tall grasses, are a big part of it actually. They seem like junk shrubs, but they're quite beautiful right now.
coming up to the first significant rapids, big rock rapids. That old trip report from the town of Manitouage says the portage was 40 meters. The write up on my CCR said 400. I'm hoping I don't have to use the portage at all. I'd much rather wade um, and ideally run it. So we'll see, getting close. So there is a portage. That's good news if I need it. I'm just gonna walk it, um, take GPS tracks for my map for the future, and uh, scout the rapids while I'm at it. Hmm. There's a very narrow channel there against the big rock, but it looks like it has a decent amount of volume. I'll have to get a closer look though. This is a pretty stunning morning stroll. So it's a pretty tight run, but looks clean as well. So as long as I can keep her straight, should be fine. I should stop running rivers in low water. So I can either line this or do it the fun way. Here we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a barrel of laughs. <sighs> that was fun. Okay, let's see if we can turn the fishing lock around. Whew. Gets my heart racing though. I'm not too proud to say that. I'm throwing a confidence lure for me, it's just this uh, Northline flasher jig. The live target paddle tail, which is quite beat up. Usually it looks a lot nicer. But nothing, not a nibble. Like if there were pike here, for sure I would be getting hit, at least by them. Nothing. There are three major waterfalls ahead, which are really like a big uh, point of this trip, the waterfalls. So maybe they're below them, I hope. I need three meals. If I stay full nine days, I need at least three meals from fish. So. There's a long, shallow swift ahead, but it looks like it's got enough water for me. Which is lovely. No better way to make up time than over easy swifts. You make incredible distances in no time. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. The river is lined with tamarack here, and some of them haven't changed at all. Some of them are almost fully changed, and it's creating a, a beautiful spectrum. I'm on the first of five lakes before all the waterfalls, Sagi Watan Lake. It's quite beautiful. Nice rock there with green and yellow and then marsh all around. I am starting to get cold now. Surprisingly dry in here. I'm just stopping for a snack, some chocolate, and some cheese and crackers. It'll help warm me up. 
just from stopping there for like 10 minutes, I'm now shivering. So I'm just gonna have to paddle hard to warm back up. I don't wanna wet any of my dry clothes. I'll just, there's no drying them out after this. Like it's gonna be rainy and cold the rest of the way. So anything that gets wet is going to be wet the rest of the trip. Mm. Oh, it's gonna feel so good to get in the sleeping bag tonight. Oh. There are lots of deadheads poking up in these lakes and along the river. This river used to be log driven, so they would send the, they would cut the logs and then they would send them down the river. And there were lots of remnants. Fish on, finally. Probably just a pike. Oh no, it looked like a walleye when it splashed there. Yep. Oh man. Be a nice eater walleye, but I'm not gonna stop and cook one up right now. If he gets off, that's fine. Thanks, buddy. Needed that. I just ate, and I don't. I don't have the willpower to clean and, and cook it right now. I'm just tired and a little worn down. All I really want is to make camp, so the more progress I make, the sooner I can do that. If I caught that fish when I was ready to make camp, that would be fantastic. Not yet. It stopped raining, and it is flat calm right now. Gorgeous. This lake looks amazing. A bit ugly. It usually is with me. <laughs> There's a nice tongue here. And then I'm gonna have to eddy out and weigh the rest. Eddie out my butt. That was bony. Stop obstacles, and I don't. I don't have the skill level to turn on a dime in rapids. This is how I learn, though. I'll get there eventually. I'm gonna go cut off that log. It makes that section a lot harder than it ought to be. There. I win. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> There's a family of otters playing ahead. They must be feeding on something. Because they're all going crazy over something in that one spot. <laughs> they look like an octopus. Yep, that guy's eating something. Cool. 
Let's go see what it is. I don't see anything. Just weeds and some clamshells. I guess it was the clamshells. I was thinking it might be a fish that they were thrashing about with. Hmm. John, just a pike. Hmm. Feisty. Jeez. There we go. Gonna be more bump and scrape. That's nothing serious. Tiny pipe. Okay, perfect. All right. Under the forestry road we go. I'm not sure if this is a usable road, but it'd be a nice place to start the route if it was. Most enjoyable stuff yet, that's for sure. <laughs> that was a blast, that's what you want. Just nice standing waves, nothing intimidating, just pure fun. Ah. I have to wade this next bit. Angling. There we go. Okay. Getting to some little bit better rapids. <laughs> Ooh, a couple of swans. Just scouted this one. 
it looks straightforward as long as I hit right in the middle. On either side of it are rocks that could uh, tip me. Crazy. I can't get a hit at any of the rapids, but trolling in the lake sections, there's another small pike, but still. It's another small pike. Thank you. Hear the rain. It's about to get hard. Labuscon Lake is stunning. It was clearly burnt 15, maybe 20 years ago. But the regeneration is beautiful. And it's just a, a rocky lake, unique, wild. <laughs> oh, it's pouring. Heavy drops, they almost sting. At least it's not hail or snow. Actually, snow would be nice. Well, it's a small pike now. Sleeping bag is gonna feel so good. Dry clothes, a tarp. Mm. Mm. The fish seem to like the weather. Too bad they're all small pike though. This one could be kept, it's just big enough. But. I really don't feel like it in these conditions. <laughs> Full of sand hill trains. Startled me with their big croak. Loud birds. Oh, it feels good. Just got my merino base layer on and a fleece jacket, fleece sweater. So, and hopefully it doesn't rain again before I set up the, the tarp. I'm gonna make camp here. It's about a burn, but it looks like it's 15 or 20 years old at least. 
some of the jack pine are getting big, big enough to hang off of, so I'm going to take it. There's endless fire, firewood here. To have a nice bonfire and warm up, that's going to be really nice from all the old burnt wood. Even after all that rain, it's super dry. <laughs> Worked out beautifully. Just as I got the ridge line up, I could hear the rain coming across the water. Ran back, grabbed my kit, staked it out a couple things, and now I'm, I'm dry. Uh, rain isn't too bad right now, but it seems like it's gonna be on and off. So, feels really good to be under here. I'm really glad I have the burner. And I'm gonna make a, a good dinner right now. <laughs> I earned it today. Feeling really good. It was like kind of a miserable day, but uh, it was too pretty to to not love it. it was so so scenic, not in like a Rocky Mountains kind of way, in a more subtle way. But I really appreciate it. Ooh. Would you like some wine, John? Yes, John. I would love that. It's so gracious of you. Hmm, thank you. Oh, John. Well done. Mm. Oh, you're quite welcome, John. Cheesy penne with mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna have a bonfire tonight. The rain is just starting to let up, but it's dark now and I'd rather just get to bed. Hopefully one in the morning. Just gonna do a little reading and hit the hay. No bonfire tonight, but this book makes me feel a lot better. It's about paddling in a kayak around the Arctic. And they have freezing temperatures and polar bears. And I have above freezing temperatures and only black bears. So it feels good. It's very entertaining. It's a good book so far. Bacon and potato chowder for breakfast. The rolls. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. That's good. Nice and warm on a cold morning. It's been raining on and off still, so no bonfire. Favorite campsite so far. Good water access. It was really nice. Almost at the end of Wabuscon Lake. It's been a beautiful one. And then I've got a portage into Kawapiti Lake. And then there's either two portages, one of which is almost two kilometers. So obviously I don't want to touch that. They go around Kawapiti Rapids, which is about a two and a half kilometer stretch. Oh, fish on. Of, oh, no, it's off. Of rapids. So, even if I have to weigh them, it'll still be faster than taking an overgrown portage for the blowdown, I'm sure. It was last cleared, I think, in 2016 by Chief Mishano and Big Dugong. So, I don't really want to take that and have to clear it alone. 
sure is a small pike. What else could it be? Yep. There's an old dam here at the end of Wabuscon Lake. Not sure if it was for forestry. They don't really make them like this anymore where you can just walk right onto them. They're usually gated up and everything. And this one's somewhat decrepit, so. <laughs> so tempting to run this. There are a couple ledges down there, but it would be quite a ride. The water is racing through there. So the downside of a solo canoe is that the yoke needs to go right in front of the seat, so it has to be removed anytime you want to portage. This removable yoke is just secured with a bolt and this screw-on piece, nut, big nut. There's a good trail around the dam, but the 75 pound canoe makes everything a little difficult. On second thought, not runnable. <laughs> the ledges are bigger than they look from the other direction. No bites here, but it's all pretty fast moving current and a lot of buried logs that leave like a foot of water over top. So I'm gonna try a little farther down. And I'm sorry about the water on the lens, but there's just no way to stop it right now. It's misting and the mist gets everywhere into everything. The sound of a long stretch of rapids behind you is fairly intimidating. I'm getting my rescue link SOS button and keeping it handy. I promised Aaron that I would, on the rapids at least. Hopefully this is fun. I don't think it should be too scary, like the water levels. It shouldn't be anything crazy. Tight squeeze there. my GPS position here. I'm hoping I'm through. Looks like it. Oh man, that was like being on a treadmill for, I don't know, two or three hours, but instead of a flat platform, it's 
bouldery, slippery rocks in moving water. It was pretty tiring actually, I'm almost sweating. I'm at the portage around High Falls and they sound amazing, I can't wait to see them. Beautiful scene there too, the colors as usual. Dandy. Looks like quite a falls. <laughs> that is an amazing waterfall. One of the best I've seen anywhere. Oh. You can see some otters down in the pool. Wonder if they're as amazed as I am. Gotta get my gear across so I can see it at the bottom though. Can't wait. I read that when this river was log driven, they had a watchman's shack here. So I guess it was a tower where they could see down the river a bit and look for log jams, which they would have to then go break up. And I was told there were, there were relics left behind. I don't know if this is one, nor do I know what it is. But uh, could be. Pretty cool to imagine. Not all that long ago. Some guys in a big tower looking for log jams. Be a, quite a career. Some more relics of something. Beautiful rock. It's hard to leave, I'm just lingering. Not a nibble. The only place that I've caught them is in the lake, so I haven't caught barely a thing. I've hardly had a bite in the river, even below rapids and falls. It's just too shallow, I guess. It's time to move on. I want to make a little more progress today and then I'll set up camp. Spent a good, probably three hours portaging around, filming and enjoying these falls. So I got a good dose of it. Very hard to leave though. Falls was worth the price of admission to this point. Fantastic. Man, that's good.
got a souvenir. Sadly, I cannot bring it. I'm just gonna toss it up on shore. Oh. <laughs> Looking for a campsite that ideally has a nice cedar canopy, something like that but also with good water access, not like a muddy, steep bank. And the two have been mutually exclusive so far. I can get one, but not both together. And I really want a nice rocky outcrop to have a bonfire on because it's dangerous to have a fire right in the woods without a stone pit set up. You can burn down into the roots and start a forest fire that way. So. Onward. Found a place where the bank isn't too, it's firm enough. Just put a log down to let me unload off of. A little clearing here. <laughs> and then there's a nice cedar grove in there to go camping. I'll take this birch bark. I gotta find a way to have a fire. I really want one. So good. The spot's working out great. Having a small fire there, it's basically mud underneath it. Got lots of water filtering, tarps up, and just a really nice cedar grove, a bit of spruce, and lots of moss. Very peaceful. KD tonight, extra creamy. Some ketchup. Mm. And the last of the wine rations. Good night. Not raining, not misting. I never choose white wine over red, except when I'm camping and it's kind of cold. This cold red wine is gross. My Oma doesn't really drink. And one time she got us a bottle of wine when we came over and she had put the red wine in the fridge to chill. <laughs> Bless her. Bless her heart. I think I'll be asleep pretty fast tonight. Today wasn't the longest day by distance, but it was uh, it was a full body workout. Tomorrow, more waterfall action. Should be good. I slept in a little and got a very late start to the day. It's almost 10 a.m. I'm just getting on the water, so I'm gonna have to hustle. On the plus side, there's some blue sky. I feel like I haven't seen it since day, maybe part of day two, day five now. On satellite, I had marked the log jam here. I could see the logs, but there's actually a clear passage through. That helps, and I'm already at Middle Falls. I just camped a little upstream of it. You can hear it now. I think it's two parts, two different falls. Here's the upper half of Middle Falls. It's a small one. 
the bottom half is larger. Trail is not good here. I've, I've lost it essentially. Picked up the trail again, cleared it. It's a good way to warm up in the morning. Interesting tracks here. Looks maybe canine. I think it must be wolf, probably. Buckets of blue sky. That's still raining. River as shallow as ever. That's the White Otter River coming in. Aaron and I paddled that last year. Oh my goodness. A, school, a huge school of fish. I don't know what they are. I'm going to cast. It's a massive school. I thought it was like a patch of seaweed or something. You're heading downstream. You follow them a little. Discreetly. Wow. It went from feeling warm with some blue sky and spotting a school of trout to that school going downstream. I have no idea where and a hard downpour now. Temperature dropped like 10 degrees, I feel like. Lots of tracks in the sand. Still waiting on my moose. I think it'll come. Just spotted another school. Okay. Cast is placed. Probably gonna swim right by it. When they're on the move like this, sometimes they're they're hard to stop to get their attention. Right there, it's a good 20 of them, and I cast it right past their faces. No interest. Another school coming up, and I'm pretty sure they're suckers. That must be what they are. Makes good sense. Suckers are everywhere. Tons of them here. I'm gonna, I cast it past them, and I can see them, and nope, no interest at all. Of course, like, I don't think anyone catches suckers on, on lures. Except maybe a jig. Ooh, I can see a lamprey on one of them. Ooh, that's nasty. Yeah, they're suckers. Dang. Such a point to that clay mountain there. Almost looks like an Egyptian pyramid. Wow.
calling it a day here. I'm pretty soaked and the temperature is falling and it's supposed to get pretty chilly tonight. Tarp doesn't quite fit between those trees, but it's just gonna have to work. It's not quite wide enough. Hacked out a little trail to get into the bush. But then down here, I've got a nice beach where I can hopefully have a bonfire tonight, but I highly doubt it because it's been raining all day. Just as I was getting comfortable here, got my wool sweater on, roof over my head, scotch and dinner on. I went to go filter some water, realized I left one of the tubing pieces at my last camp. I distinctly remember hanging over a branch as I was disassembling the filtration and thinking, you idiot, don't forget this. I'm putting this here for one second. Do not leave this here. I left it there, obviously. So from here on out, it's either drink water straight, which from what I've heard from people who have had Giardia, it's not worth the risk. Um, I have filtration tablets. I always have them as a backup for water, but they upset my stomach and make it feel like acidy um, or boiling, but I have limited fuel. So I'll, I'll probably have to use the tablets, but it's all right. I, hopefully I can have more fires after this and I can boil water without using fuel. Today was the last day to have a significant amount of rain forecasted. And after this, it's supposed to get colder, but lower chance of rain. So I would take that for sure. I don't think I've ever had a trip where I've been wet for four days straight, aside from sleeping, obviously. And I would love some dry weather. I don't even care how cold it was. It could be freezing the rest of the time. If it stayed dry, I'd be happy. Anyway, it's all good. Another good day, and I got Manitou Falls just around the corner to look forward to tomorrow. It's painful to be foiled by your own stupidity out here though. The only cure for such self-loathing is scotch. Mmm. Ah, my self-esteem. Been a rough year for gear. Uh, on my trip with Joe, I lost my GoPro and hat uh, in Quetico. My main camera broke, and Aaron lost the net. This trip, I lost the net, <laughs> and now, and now my water filter, which isn't that cheap actually. Um, the upside is that I had to replace the filter. I've been back flushing it pretty much every time I use it to to make it usable. Clutch. You know what this means. It's okay. It's okay. I feel good. On a cold and wet trip, it's quite nice reading about people who are much colder and much wetter. So I've got my water set for the day. I boiled a liter, poured it into here, let it cool, then poured it into the bladder for the filter. I'll take that along with me on the portage. It's not much, just a liter is not much to, to uh, carry. Boiled another pot, poured it in here. So I've got two liters of water. I made the last of the potato and bacon chowder and made it extra soupy, just for extra liquid in there. Got some green onion tad. And in terms of meals, um, like I think I said earlier, I'm, I was counting on three meals from fish on this trip and I haven't had one yet. So yesterday I started reducing my portion sizes, which is fine because the meals were actually quite large uh, the way I had portioned them. So like three curry meals becomes four now. 
and they're still perfectly satisfying. So I think that'll be fine. I've also got my last roll. And this will be a good hearty meal to get me through till dinner basically. I'm not going to stop. It's going to be a late start again today. Probably won't leave till 10 after boiling the water and all that, getting warm, getting my clothes a little dry. Um, so I'll just have a snack and stop for a big dinner. Packed really nice warm hearty meals for this trip and that was really nice. I'm really glad I did that. Because I'm alone on this trip, I don't really have to do a great job of dishes. And this is effective anyway, I just boil them, it sanitizes them well. There's nothing colder in the morning than cold wet socks, so this feels really nice to warm them up first. about 20 yards away from the top of Manitou Falls and it's just coming in the earshot now, it's funny. Some falls you can hear from kilometers away. I'm just hearing this one now. Here's the top of the falls. Ah, I'm glad I left this for this morning. I'm really excited now. Let's do a little port, warm up, enjoy the falls. Here is just as spectacular as the falls. Beautiful patterns in it. Quite chilly this morning. Just saw the first few flurries of the year. It's uh, October 1st today, and my hands are very cold already. I'm hoping some hard paddling is gonna warm them up. Excellent portage here. Oh! Had one on, I saw him right at the boat. Hit really soft. I thought I was just bumped bottom. Set the hook too late. Sun's busting through. That feels so good. Oh! Oh, my. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm dry. Yeah, it's just a pike. It's a very pale colored one. I'm just gonna try and let him get off. He's just big enough that you could eat them in him, but I have to get going. I just don't have time. If you hold a pike like this, you gotta really curl your fingers around so you don't touch the, uh, the fleshy gills. Thanks, buddy. Ah! The water is increasingly stained and harder for lures to be seen in the water. So I'm using this really loud inline spinner, clangs around, and it pulsates in the water, and the fish can feel that. So if they can't see it, they can feel it. Another pike, smaller this time. Very pale again. 
you grab the line like this, you're a lot more likely to lose the fish. If I'm grabbing the line, that means I don't care to lose it. <laughs> Just gonna shake him here. Thank you. And leaving them in the water like that is better for them too. Just check the time and it's quarter past 12 and I've put a kilometer behind me today. I need to cover at least 25 today and ideally 33 so I can do the 100k in the remaining three days. That's going to be very hard now. again. I wouldn't mind some snow on this trip. Got my wish. First snow of the year. It's all gonna melt as soon as it hits the ground I'm sure. It's still pretty. fun. <laughs> I thought everything down of Manitou Falls was flat water. There's a little moving water. Helps break up the monotony. It's nice. <laughs> That's good little fun. Poor beaver was working so hard to pull that stick across the river. <laughs> Tried to slow down and give him space. But that's okay, it floats. He'll be back for it. Got some nice clean water to boil for drinking out of this little stream. The water in the river is like iced coffee at this point. Doesn't taste great either. This will be nice. Got camp set up in the bush up there. And I, I'm too tired to make anything. I'm just gonna have some more cheese and crackers and call it a day. It's actually not a great campsite, but that's to be expected on this river, especially in the bottom half. Steep mud. I tried to get into several spots before this one, and uh, they were so thick with dogwood that I gave up. This one had a beaver trail already cut through it, so that helped me get up here. Ugh. And then I hacked out of sight. Back in there. <sighs> okay. Okay. Time for the thickest wool sock I brought. It's gonna feel amazing. Oh. Yes. It's supposed to be minus three tonight, so everything has to be bone dry that comes in the in the sleeping bag with me. Otherwise it will really chill me. With a low of minus three, I think it's unlikely that all the water I just got would freeze. 
but just in case it gets down to minus five or something, I'm gonna pour some into my pot so that uh, even if this is a block of ice, I can easily heat it. It's a relief to be done for the day and be saddled up in the hammock. About an hour, maybe two hours ago, while I was searching for a campsite, I got really badly chilled. I had to put all my clothes on. <clears throat> it wasn't a time for filming. And then I had to paddle hard just to warm back up. The, the cold feet and legs were killing me. My upper body's working, but my, my lower body is just dead. And it's so cold, so. I'm gonna have to work on that tomorrow. If, I, if it's not gonna rain, then I can dress better and use more of my clothes. But the other scary part of, of using all my clothes there to get warm was if I dumped, I would have very little to wear, and that's not good. So, it's just a challenging time to camp. Pizza for breakfast, no rain, dry feet, should be a good day. Did some rough calculations on my map and I think I did about 30 clicks yesterday. So if I can do that again today and tomorrow, then I'll be back home by tomorrow night. Sleet today. I was pretty tempted to postpone this trip by a week because of the forecast. You never know, if you postpone a canoe trip, you might never get it back. The next week might be worse, and then before you know it, we're into winter. I have neoprene pants on today. They're helping quite a lot with my legs and my dry shoes are nice. My feet are still cold, but they're not painfully cold like they were yesterday. Part of the joy of the backcountry is that we finally get a chance to disconnect. Not just from the digital world, but from our jobs, our families, our friends, and our day-to-day -day burdens. It all vanishes and you step through a gateway into your own personal Narnia, where it's just you, your gear, the lake, and the trees. Some people call it escapism. Are we running from reality out here? Running from our troubles? Is the burden of our life so much to bear that the only reprieve is to disconnect from everything and everyone we know? I don't believe that's the case. It's more like medicine for a cluttered mind and a heavy heart. When you return from the wilderness, you're fresher, more in tune and seeing clearly. You come back to the cacophony of society more ready to conduct your own life's orchestra. You didn't run away, you just gave yourself a chance to heal. There he is, finally. Been going down the river just waiting for one. Quite a rock. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> yes! Finally! I've been waiting. To be completely honest, the paddling downstream of Manitou Falls has been monotonous and all I've been waiting for at every corner I, I round is a moose or a bear, something. And that was the dream. Fully racked. Great engagement, looking right at me. That was such a thrill. He was starting to worry me as he came out into the river. He was walking directly toward me. He was obviously aware of me. And I don't know, he's a hundred yards away, but I don't really, I don't have much of an escape here. I was starting to think if he, was, if he kept coming, I was gonna try and zip down this side while he was kind of on his way over. Pretty sure I could go faster, fast enough to get by him. But that I didn't have to. I just sat there, looked at him, and and he took off in, into the bush. Perfect. That makes my day, big time. What a beautiful animal. And the way he goes through the dogwood, which is hard. Like this is a tangle with that big rack. You could see him struggle a little bit, but he's so powerful, he just bulldozes. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, good day. Oh, yes. I haven't been this happy since the Quetico erratic. Filming is very challenging on a trip like this in general. Um, with the cold conditions, you get things fogging up. You always get the mist on the lens. You gotta clean it off. If it's spitting, I have to put my hat over the camera quite often if it's spitting, just so water doesn't get on the lens and I don't have to clean it. And if it starts pouring rain, then I have to put it away in a dry bag. This camera is weather sealed, so it can withstand a splash or some spitting but you can't, you can't take being submerged or heavy rain. So it really adds to the challenge of filming when the conditions are like this, when it's on and off rain too, like it's frustrating, but I'm, I'm always keeping up with it in the hopes that there's gonna be that moment. So I have it on the tripod here and I'm waiting for that moment and it finally came. It's just very rewarding, feels really good. Hacked out another trail building off a beaver trail up to somewhere to camp for the night. Made a nice spot here. And coincidentally, right where I intended on camping, talk about the circle of life. 
earlier. I'm filming one today, sleeping over one's grave. I'm not gonna take these home. I have nothing I would do with them. Just be more stuff, but just felt like they needed a cleaning. Very cool. That's a bit better. Cart my firewood down here to the beach. There's nothing but dogwood. Tonight has been the most relaxing night by far and much needed. I stopped around five as opposed to every other night where I've stopped, I think it's six or later, and had just enough time to set up camp and eat before dark. All my toes were bright red when I took off my socks. Uh, I put on new ones and, and warmed them up. And then there was about two hours of pain <laughs> while, while blood came back into them. But they're feeling good now and I am too. Oh, bundled up here. It's supposed to be minus three again tonight, according to my week old forecast. But I'm sure I'll be good and warm. I was last night. I was just prepping my fire and then noticed a dark shape over there. And it's not just one dark shape, but two. Awesome. Good morning. This is magical and all, but I gotta start breakfast. Loving the moose right now. Big fan. Um, yeah. 
I almost didn't notice them too, I'm assuming they were coming up the side of the river, judging by all the tracks along the banks, I'm assuming that's how they like to travel. It's faster than slamming through the bush, I guess. And you could tell they, they wanted to continue, but they were wary. So they cut in land, and I'm sure they'll go around me and then go back to the shoreline. About 15 minutes has passed since the two ladies took off, and now I'm hearing a male grunting down there. I don't know if he's been following them. Probably. Mating season. is coming. This bull moose. Hey! 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 Get out of here! He's right there. A bull moose in the rut is dangerous. He's right there. I'm gonna try and get in the canoe, I think. But there he goes, there he goes. Get! Get! <laughs> I heard his pumping. <laughs> Go on! Still just over there, right where I camped last night. Oh, heart pounding. <laughs> he crossed the river like 15, 20 minutes ago. And I, yeah, I didn't even think he might come right to me. I was thinking he was trying to avoid me and just get out of Dodge. Whew, okay. And cap the bear spray. <laughs> I didn't want to have to use it, but if he came at me, like, that's all you can do. What a morning! <laughs> Still got about an eighth of this route left, about 25 kilometers, but it really feels like it's already complete after this morning. What more could I ask for?
Our world's biggest challenge right now is that we don't understand our relationship with nature. If we don't learn to speak the language of nature, learn to love it and to respect it, it's scary to think what that could mean. Not so much for humanity, but for every other victim that lies in our wake of destruction. The caribou, the trout, the butterflies, the birds and the bees. If not for ourselves, we have to do better for them. We are not alone here. You are not alone. Our species is part of a cosmic phenomenon known as Earth. You can either contribute to its protection or its destruction, but eventually you return to it. What soil will we leave behind? In the home stretch here, uh, about six kilometers left, I just got signal back, a weak signal, for the first time all trip. Texted Erin that I'd be home a day early. I told her I might be nine days. This is day eight. She was all excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to see her. I miss her. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. The only thing that is cuter than how excited John gets when he sees me at the end of a trip is how excited he gets when he sees a bag of Doritos. Every single time he acts like I read his mind and it's adorable. So I've, I'm on my way to pick him up from the pick. He's been gone for eight days. Um, I have Doritos for him and a cold beer. So really looking forward to seeing him. Hoping he had a great trip. And um, excited to see his cute little grin when, he, <laughs> when we catch up and he sees his treats. Half an hour early. What a sweetheart. Here, here. <laughs> My welcoming committee. You're so early. Yes. How do you know? <laughs> Missed you. Been waiting all week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you make me so happy. Finished that trip a couple of weeks ago, and I hope you enjoyed it. As you can, I'm sure, tell from the video, nature means a hell of a lot to me. It probably means a lot to you too if you're watching this. And I just want to say one thing. Nature is incredibly powerful, but it cannot protect itself from us. As a species, we have become too powerful and too numerous. The rate at which we consume, burn, and create waste is not sustainable with the number of people on Earth today. We need to change our lifestyles, and most of us know this already, and I am saying that I am very much a part of the problem of Earth right now. I am not pointing the finger at you, I am speaking to us as a species. Trying to make the change alone is, is very difficult. You see the people around you not making changes, and you feel disadvantaged, you feel angry. But we can't make these changes as individuals, we have to make them as a society. And this is why we have governments. And this is really the only point I want to get across here. Governments are the most important part to solving this problem, but governments, at least in a democracy, can only move so far ahead of public opinion before they lose popularity and then lose power. So they're always balancing that, right? We have to be supportive of green initiatives. We have to give the government support to make these changes and to vote for them. Show that our vote counts on how they view this issue. There's a rather important election coming up in the United States in a, in a couple of weeks. Even though I have a passionate opinion on this subject, I'm not even going to go there. Nature, protecting nature is a non-partisan issue. This is the earth that we live on. This is our planet. 
That is not political. But any government that doesn't understand the state of the natural world right now cannot possibly act in the best interests of its citizens. I'll stop there. If you want to have any discussion with me on this in the comments, I welcome that. Let's just have a discussion and not uh, bicker. We need to learn to respect each other's opinions. And yeah, thank you again for listening. I've been this happy since the Quetico erotic. <laughs> Take two. I haven't been this happy since the Quetico erratic. It's getting chilly. I'm, I'm making chili. That was not on purpose at all. It's the scotch talking. Slow down, man. You even have dinner yet. Someone hasn't been brushing. Look at this plaque. You should really see a hygienist. Don't you worry, little boy. We got chili. Garlic bread. I'm not a boy, I'm a man. Can you guys do something for my shot? You're just standing. Move a little, please. I love you, man. Oh, I lost a couple things. I don't believe it. A net? I lost the net. No! <laughs> you! It was the most humbling moment <laughs> of all time. Ha <laughs> ha!